Based on your feedback, I've got two of your favorite Android phones in my hands right now. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and in one hand, the LG or Google Nexus 4. In the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. They're very similar in a lot of ways, very different in other ways. Let's put them together in a dogfight battle and see which one comes out on top. So at first glance, they may look a little bit different, at least in terms of size. And of course, OEMs, obviously this one's designed by LG, this one's made by Samsung, but they have quite a few similarities just in the fact that they're both incredibly hot Android smartphones. This is the LG Nexus 4 designed by Google, marketed by Google, and sold in the Google Play Store and online, or actually, excuse me, in stores at T-Mobile uh, in retail stores. So this thing, what's really cool about it the price. It's a low, low price point. There are two models available, 8 and 16 gigabytes, and you can buy them contract free starting at $299. So for the 8 gigabyte version, you can pay $299. For the 16 gigabyte version, you can pay $349, and you're getting a device with incredible specifications. Now, compare that to something like this. Incredible specs over here, really a feature packed device. But if you go into Verizon, you're going to be paying upwards of $600 for retail for the Galaxy Note 2. So keep that in mind. You know, you look at full retail prices at AT&T and Verizon and Sprint and T-Mobile and they're about 450 depending on what device you're getting all the way up for the iPhones up into the $800 range, $849 range. So keep that in mind. This is an incredible value for the price point. But the question is, these are both hot Android devices. Which one offers the best blend of productivity, specs, and features? We're going to find that out in the dogfight. But first, going to give some love to my friends at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this. So we just turn around and give to you for free. We don't keep them. We give them to you for free at Instant Win. Dot phone dog dot com. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, they'll help you set it up based on their walkout working program. You'll walk out the door with your email, your contacts, your web settings, all good to go. So when you walk out the door, you're working at Best Buy Mobile. Let's talk a little bit about the specifications, the overall build quality, and more. This is the Nexus 4. Like I said, it's packing a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU, so a quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU, a 4.7-inch IPS HD display, here, 8 megapixel camera on the back, 2,100 milliamp hour battery, front facing camera of course, and a stock build of Android 4.2. It's the next iteration in the Nexus line of devices. People love it. It's selling out. And I actually just got a few back in in Google Play this morning, but I'm sure by the time this goes live, they'll be sold out yet again. A very popular device, and rightfully so. The build quality is fantastic on this device. Really a clean look, the black, and of course a speckled battery door, speckled uh, back door if you will here. Looks really nice with the Nexus logo, with the LG logo. You got your volume rocker on the left side, power button on the right side, and back over here on the left side, your micro USB char excuse me, your, your uh, micro SIM card slot. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, micro USB charging port. There we go, Aaron. Nice job this time. Micro USB charging port down at the bottom. Then you have the Note 2 available on five different carriers, US Cellular, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. So the availability here is far greater than the Nexus 4. You can use this on AT&T and on T-Mobile. Highly recommend using it on T-Mobile because it can take advantage of T-Mobile's HSPA Plus 42 megabits per second connectivity. So you can get some nice fast speeds if you're using it on T-Mobile, whereas it maxes out at 21 megabits per second on AT&T. Power button on the right side over here, typical Samsung look and feel, kind of a plasticky build quality. You're either going to love that or you're going to hate it, but really a decent build quality all around. I find it to be pretty durable and uh, works relatively well all around. Then you've got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack down here at the bottom, S Pen, volume rocker, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, and then your camera on the back with nice big Verizon 4G LTE logos there on the back, and then of course a Verizon logo down there on the button at the bottom as well. Specs wise, you're looking at a 1.6 gigahertz quad core Exynos processor here, a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED HD display, 8 megapixel camera on the back, a gigantic 3,100 milliamp hour removable battery. Android 4.1, Samsung's TouchWiz user interface, 4G LTE connectivity on Verizon, and of course the S Pen gives you the ability to kind of use it like a tablet, smartphone, hybrid, or a phablet, as we like to call it in the industry. Let's take a look at the user interfaces and see what's different. Now obviously you've got stock Android 4.2 over here, which is the latest version of Jelly Bean. You've got 4.1 over here, which is a slightly older version, also called Jelly Bean, ironically enough. And then you've got your widget set up up here at the top as well. So one thing I kind of point out, I like to point out a lot of little things because I think when you're looking at Android in 2013, a lot of the distinguishing factors, it really is based on little things, what you like, what you don't like about the device. One thing I've always really enjoyed about Samsung's user interface is notice how when I swipe, it moves directly from apps to widgets, whereas over here, it stays right in my applications. It doesn't auto switch me to widgets. I love that. I can click it when I'm ready. 
When I'm not ready, I can keep it on either widgets or apps. Small little things like that, no big deal but uh, something I find particularly useful. Now, stock Google over here, you're not gonna get any carrier install bloatware. You're gonna see a lot of Google integration with Chrome, Currents, Google Plus, local maps, all that stuff you would expect from a Google device. Over here, you do get some Verizon stuff and Samsung stuff, all share play, Amazon, Amazon Kindle, Amazon MP3, Audible. You got, of course, the Google Plus integration over here as well, but Keys Air, and then we'll scroll through here. Mobile Hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, NFL Mobile, all of which are Verizon applications. Then you got Budini down here, few applications I've installed, Visual Voicemail, VZ Navigator, and that looks to be it on the Verizon side. So two physical buttons on here, capacitive menu button, capacitive back button, and then a physical home button, which when you press it down and you hold it, you can access the task manager, you can access Google Plus, or Google Now rather, and then of course you can remove all the applications if you want to get rid of those. Down here, recent applications, and then when you want to access Google Now, you press and hold the home button, swipe up, and you can get right in to Google Now. So both of these include Google Now, which is Google's fantastic service. A lot of people love it, and both of those have the capability of doing it. Now here's the notifications bars. So these look a little bit different. Android 4.2 and a pure version at that. You'll notice a couple of new things here. You'll see the way the overall icons are displayed and the way the notifications are displayed, slightly different. The way the time is displayed, very similar in a lot of ways because 4.1 to 4.2, no huge changes there. I do like the fact that Samsung includes some shortcuts up here at the top and you can of course swipe through those and use those as you see fit. This is a pesky Verizon thing. The Wi-Fi notification stays there regardless of whether Wi-Fi is on or off. It's part of their way to keep you, they wanna keep you on tiered data. They wanna encourage you to use Wi-Fi when you're at home, when you're in the office, and so they have a little pesky Wi-Fi notification. I don't care for it, I'd love to be able to remove it, but you know what, they chose to do it. This is a new feature though to Android 4.2. If I use two fingers and I swipe down, I can access this little control panel that gives me unique shortcuts to brightness, settings, Wi-Fi, of course, network connectivity, battery life, airplane mode, Bluetooth, and of course, if I wanna connect here, my Google Plus profile, I can go directly in and access that. So I can do that one of two ways. I can pull it down normally and click this button and it'll swipe over, or I can use two fingers and easily swipe it down. Now that partially addresses my issue with having a physical battery percentage, but I love some of the manufacturer installed user interfaces because I have that ability in settings to easily add the percentage indicator that way. Now what really sets Samsung apart to me, and this is something, you know, touch whiz, a lot of people, there's love-hate battles all day long about user interfaces. Some people love stock Android, and that's awesome. It's really made some incredible improvements over the years. It's clean, it's refined, it looks good, the fonts are beautiful, the way it performs is beautiful. I mean, this within itself, absolutely beautiful implementation. Everything looks good. But you know what, I kind of compare this to getting kind of a skinned, a bare bones version of Android, if you will. You're not really getting any features outside of stock Android. What I like about some of the skins is finally Samsung and HTC and maybe to a lesser extent LG and Motorola realize that you know what, hey, we can add some custom awesome things to the software to make it even better than stock Android. I mean, we can add some new things to the table. And I wanna talk a little bit about what is included on the Note 2 that really makes it unique. So first of all, home screen mode, I find this particularly useful. Let's say you know you bought this for your grandparents or your mom or your dad because they needed a big display, they have a hard time seeing. You can come in here and change it from standard mode to starter mode and you get some really useful widgets on the home screen. You get some easy access to your favorite applications, your favorite contacts, and more. Really like that feature. I'm just gonna roll through a couple of my favorites here. That one's cool. Display, you can come down here and the Note 2 is just packed with a lot of different random features. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but that's exactly what it is. And they are random features that are fantastic in day-to-day -day use. I've been working with the Note 2 outside of my 30-day challenges for about three months, or about two months is my personal device. Before that, I carried the Galaxy S3 for about six months in between challenges. Love the features, love the little things like smart rotation. So if you're laying in bed you know, and you turn your device like this, it gets annoying when it flips and you're trying to keep it in portrait mode. You can come over here to smart rotation and then when it looks at my face, it'll see, for example, right now, I'm tilting my head, it knows not to switch. Smart stay is pretty cool as well. The screen will stay on as long as you're looking at it. You've got display battery percentage, which you know I absolutely love. And I can come in here and set the screen mode if I want to. And then Page Buddy is really useful as well. When I pull out the S Pen, which we'll talk about in part two, it automatically pulls out and says, discover your inner creativity. And gives me kind of a custom page for that, very similar to how a custom page comes out whenever I plug in headphones and things like that. I find that to be incredibly useful and really a cool feature on the Note 2, actually on TouchWiz, I should say, which is a... Uh, most of these features are on Galaxy S3 as well with the Jelly Bean update. Really like that. You don't get the Do Not Disturb mode on the Verizon version for whatever reason, but coming down here, lock screen, some other great features, lock screen options, 
I can set my information ticker, I've got some shortcuts, I can do dual clock, I can do weather if I want to, ink effect, ripple effect, I've got camera quick access, a lot of different cool features, so when I turn it off and back on, a lot of nifty little features, I can just do like this, and access my camera quickly and easily. So I find these features to be incredibly useful in day-to-day -day performance, and they don't seem like much, but when I have my information on my home screen, when I can easily access my weather, when I can change my shortcuts if I want to on the lock screen, when I can look at dual clocks when I'm roaming or dual clocks at any given point, when I can set wake-up commands, I find all that to be relatively useful. Now here, yeah, a relatively vanilla version of Android, but we can go into settings and take a look. You do get a couple of different display options. You've got wallpaper, brightness, of course, your font size, things like that pulse notification light. So there's some useful features here, but again, I keep, you know, it's akin to me like getting a great version of Android that's just really bare bones, kind of like a car without any uh, real features or without leather, or without a sunroof or Bluetooth. Kind of that's what I imagine it to be like over here on the Nexus. That said, the price point's fantastic, and if you like to hack and root and mod, the goal of this device is obviously to let you do whatever you want to with this device. So if you, you know, you may not like TouchWiz, for example, you may not like the way it looks and feels, you don't care about the features, this is gonna be your device because you can make this your own and customize it as you see fit. Another little feature I like a lot, I was doing some test messages, these are both demo phone numbers, but you can see the same thread. Little things like this, the ability to do a background in my text messaging where I can put a picture up if I want to, or I can do a custom background. And over here, it shows my Google Plus integration, so showing my uh, Google Plus picture, and then of course I can create custom pictures for my contacts if I want to as well. But otherwise, the stock Android version doesn't really offer you a whole lot of customization there. Whereas down here, you got bubble style, for example, I can change around the overall bubbles and the way that they look. So I can really come in here and make this device my own. And so while this is great from a hacking or rooting and modding perspective, I think the average consumer is gonna walk in and be like, you know what, I can change this, I can make it my own, I can use wallpapers on my messages, I can get all these nifty features on the lock screen and within the device itself. You know what, I think this is more uh, for me from a customization standpoint. That said, both of these are incredibly powerful and that leads me to tell you about part two in which we're gonna talk about power, performance, a little bit more about customization, camera, and more. So you're going to want to stay tuned for part two of this dogfight video.